Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. My name is Natalia Moczulska and this is the news. Yesterday afternoon, Britain's Queen Elizabeth II died at the age of 96. Her reign as head of the state of the United Kingdom and 14 other Commonwealth nations lasted more than 70 years. For most of her people, she was the only monarch they had ever known. Her place on the throne will be taken by her eldest son, who will take the title of King Charles III. February 6, 1952. The Soviet Union is ruled by Joseph Stalin. The President of the United States is Harry Truman. And in Poland, the communists are introducing their order. It is then that Elizabeth II takes the British throne. She had been used to the crown for a long time. At 21, she took a special oath. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. Seventy years of the reign of Elizabeth II is a period of war and peace. Ministers and prime ministers have changed. She held her office continuously. The death of Her Majesty the Queen is a huge shock to the nation and to the world. Queen Elizabeth II was the rock on which modern Britain was built. Our country has grown and flourished under her reign. Britain is the great country it is today because of her. The monarch in the UK does not rule, they reign. Experts recall that Elizabeth II stood in the shadow of great politics and more often conducted behind the scene activities. Um, so I think she's played very well exactly the role of a constitutional monarch. She's not got involved in politics. We barely know her. I mean, she's the most charismatic sort of photographed most famous woman in the world, but she's also very enigmatic. The crown is not just England and the British Isles. It is the Commonwealth of Nations, which includes countries such as Australia, New Zealand and Canada. All these countries regarded Elizabeth II as the head of state. You know, the Queen has had a lifetime of engagement, not just with Commonwealth countries and their leaders and people, but people from many different countries across uh, the world. She's someone who is just about seen everything. The British people have an enduring love for the royal family. In this difficult time, they are now together and trying to pay tribute to the late head of state. She's been around all my life, so um, I've never known anything different. So, you know, it's going to be a big shock, you know, to me, the country. Um, you know, things are going to change. I think she'll be remembered as one of the most extraordinary leaders in a time of tremendous change. Um, She's really reminded us of what it means to be uh, putting something, you know, taking a vow and taking that seriously. Yes, yeah, very sad news. I can't believe she's actually gone. We're here from Australia and it's quite devastating to see that the longest reigning monarch has passed away, sadly. Condolences to London are pouring in from all corners of the world. My deepest condolences to the royal family and all the British people on the passing of Her Majesty the Queen. For decades, she has been an embodiment of everything that makes Britain truly great. She will be missed and remembered in Poland and all over the world. Queen Elizabeth II was a stateswoman of unmatched dignity and constancy who deepened the bedrock alliance between the United Kingdom and the United States. She helped make our relationship special. In a world of constant change, she was a steadying presence and a source of comfort and pride for generations of Britons, including many who have never known their country without her. It is with deep sadness that we learned of the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. On behalf of the Ukrainian people, we extend sincere condolences to the royal family, the entire United Kingdom, and the Commonwealth over this irreparable loss. Our thoughts and prayers are with you. It is with deep sadness that I have learned of the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. She was the world's longest-serving head of state and one of the most respected personalities worldwide. I offer my heartfelt condolences to the royal family and the British people. Charles, Elizabeth's eldest son, became the new king of Great Britain. Now the UK has entered a period of mourning, which is expected to last 10 to 12 days. During this time, sports events will be suspended and the London Big Ben bell will sound. The date of the funeral is not yet known. 
198 days of war in Ukraine. In the afternoon, the Russians carried out heavy shelling on Kharkiv. Missiles hit a kindergarten and a school, among others. The Ukrainian troops, on the other hand, are continuing their counteroffensive in the Kharkiv region and have managed to penetrate several dozen kilometers deep into the Russian positions. They have already liberated Balaklia and Shevchenkovo and are already on the outskirts of Kupiansk. Maintaining the acquired positions would be a serious blow to Russia. According to Western intelligence services, Russia is suffering huge losses. Therefore, further successes will be a great impulse for Kiev, which wants to prove that it deserves continued support from its Western partners. As part of the operation in the Kharkiv region, we are gradually regaining the lost territories. At the beginning of this week, the Ukrainian armed forces broke through enemy lines to a depth of about 50 kilometers. In response to the numerous successes of the Ukrainian troops, the aggressors conducted massive attacks on residential areas. More victims were recorded in the vicinity of Donetsk. The enemy is constantly conducting aerial reconnaissance and is continuing to improve logistical support for its troops. Over the past 24 hours, it has carried out 45 air and five missile attacks, particularly on the settlements of Kostantinovka, Tsirkun, Radushne and Kharkiv. In Kharkiv, a Russian artillery attack caused extensive damage. Local authorities report that two people were killed and four injured as a result of the shelling. My child was waiting for remote classes to start. When my child started the lesson, there was an explosion and the computer shut down. Later, we heard subsequent explosions. The issue of support for Ukraine remains one of the most important topics in the international debate on global security. Yesterday, the fifth meeting of defense ministers and chiefs of staff at the U.S. airbase in Ramstein was held. During the talks, the strategy of supporting Kiev in the coming months was focused on. Has provided almost half a million rounds of 155 artillery as an example. The United States has made a significant commitment, but so have the other countries. All of the countries are providing and according to their need, and Ukraine is being well supplied with all of the systems needed to defend themselves. We are seeing real and measurable gains from Ukraine in the use of these systems. Today, during an extraordinary meeting of ministers in Brussels, debates were held on the introduction of the European Commission's plan to limit Russian gas imports by introducing price caps. So far, the committee's proposal has caused mixed feelings among the representatives of the 27 countries of the community. There are many voices that this strategy will ensure security of supply and stabilize the energy situation in Europe. I think if we can get agreement today, the measures will have real benefit to our Irish households and households right across Europe. I think the measures the Commission have, have recommended in taking some of those excess profits and recycling them back into the households make sense. During the talks, the subject of the mandatory limitation of electricity consumption during the peak hours was also discussed. See that uh, some energy companies make huge benefits uh, due to uh, high energy prices. And at the time when our households pay uh, high uh, bills, I cannot accept that there are companies that make high profits. So absolutely, we support the Commission uh, on this European way uh, to uh, cap uh, revenues, to, to have these windfall profits. The Kremlin is planning retaliation for for possible price caps on Russian gas. If the plans for the European Union are implemented, Moscow is determined to hit the European energy sector. Vladimir Putin warns, we will not deliver anything if it is against our interests, in this case economic. No gas, no oil, no coal, no heating oil, nothing. Thousands of people took to the streets of Stockholm today to demand climate action and to protest the lack of focus on climate issues in the run-up to the Swedish general election this Sunday. Organizers said more than 4,000 people marched from the city center to the parliament, where Swedish climate activist Greta Thunberg addressed the crowd. Greta Thunberg, 19, began her weekly Fridays for future protests in 2018, in the weeks before the last election and her school strikes have since turned into a global youth movement demanding action on climate change. Four years ago, I, together with some other young people, had been on a strike for the climate outside parliament for three weeks ahead of the election. And the day before the election, we decided to continue striking every Friday until Sweden was in line with the Paris Agreement under the banner Fridays for Future. 
And this is because we realize that our right and duty to stand up against injustice goes beyond parliamentary elections. And the same goes for Sunday. Back then, there were four of us. Now, we're in the thousands. No party in Sweden is taking the climate crisis seriously or has policies in line with what is needed to keep us in line with the Paris Agreement. If we include all our emissions and look at the social justice aspect, this election campaign has, as always, been dominated by populism, party programs that are detached from reality, aggressive personal attacks and pure lies. We don't want to be doing this. We young people have not created this crisis. But still it's us that have to communicate it. Because those with platforms and so many adults actively choose not to do anything. Even that burden, they dump on us. It has been rubbish. It's only been about wallet questions and sob stories at patrol pumps. And the climate that has been completely forgotten about. We would have wished that the climate would have dominated the election campaign. Much more and more parties would have come together to say that we need to tighten the climate goals. And that is why we're here today, the last chance before the election to lift the question that the climate needs to be higher up on the agenda. Polls show the left and right blocs are currently running neck and neck. The war in Ukraine and the ongoing energy crisis, which has seen power prices soar, are dominating the headlines. But with just two days to go before the vote, Welfare, education and gang crime are also topping the list of voter concerns. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Please stay tuned for Poland Daily Weather, Poland Daily Business and some of our other programs. But for me, it's have a great weekend.